But we're, we were talking about uh, obedience, and I got to thinking about, you know, the, the Word and, and what it means to me, and, and I thought, well, you know, it ain't going to hurt nothing to get a second opinion. So I, I checked it out on the, on the, in the dictionary there, you no know, Webster, and, and uh, it says the act of obeying. Uh, and then there was another one down. I had to dig down. I was like, the act of obeying, well, duh. You know, that's, that's pretty obvious. But it came down and it says submissive compliance. And I got to, to mulling that around a little bit. Uh, I got to thinking about submissive compliance. Submissive is really not a word I like to, to use when it's, when it's talking about me. You know, I don't like being submissive. I'm, my nature is to be uh, non-submissive, you know, kind of resilient and uh, not do what I'm supposed to do, especially if someone's giving me a direct order. I don't like it very well. Uh, I've become better at it. Used to, I was real poor at it, but, but the... I, d I got it down to where I could really carry it in, in my head and, and what would make sense to me, and it's, it's just doing what you're supposed to do. Obedience, the act of obedience is just doing what you're supposed to do. And uh, it got me thinking about, you know, what keeps us from being obedient, you know, as we walk along. Uh, I mean, you know, you ought to want to be obedient. But I don't, you know, what is it that keeps us from being obedient? And then it got to thinking about some of the things that gone on in my life, you know, and, and where, uh, what I was dealing with, there was no obedience. And I got to thinking, and the thing that came to mind the most was loading a horse in a trailer. And I don't know how many of y'all ever got to load a horse in a trailer. Uh, sometimes it's a real pleasure, and sometimes it's a real pain. <clears throat> Usually it starts off with your buddy calling you. And he's like, hey, dude. My trailer's broke. I just bought a horse. I need you to come over here and I need you to help me load this horse. And I'm thinking, hmm, this don't sound good already. You know, because it's about 4.30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon. It's fixing to be dark. So I said, all right. So we go over and, and we get the trailer and we get over there. And, and uh, when we get there, not only do I find out that the horse been in the pasture for three years and nobody's laid a hand on this horse, but that he's never been in a trailer. So this is where the fun starts. <clears throat> so we go out and we catch the horse and we get the halter on him, you know, and he's leading pretty good, and I'm kind of surprised, you know. Nobody's touched his horse in three years, you know. We didn't have that much trouble catching him, and, and uh, you know, we got him in the halter, which was a pretty amazing thing in itself. And then you go leading him around, and he's leading pretty good, and I'm thinking, hey, this might go pretty good. And you come around the corner to the trailer with the door that's standing there, and you get close to the door, or to the trailer entrance, and the door goes <laughs> like that, and then all the brakes go on. You see his eyes get big. You see his nose start. <laughs> he's breathing, man. He's got all four feet dug in, and if you're lucky, he ain't dragging you backwards. <clears throat> I've loaded more than my share of these kind of horses. Uh, I've had them up to the back of the trailer, and, and, and they drug me. I've got them up there, and they just stop. Uh, there's a... There's a lot of things that you can do, you know, to, uh, to get them in there. There's lots of uh, methods used. You carry a lot of extra rope. That's one thing I do. Uh, you can take a rope and put it up through their halter and tie it off where it won't slip on them, get it up through the trailer, and you can try to drag them in or at least hold them there while you coax them along. Uh, there's a lot of coaxing tools. There's little noise makers. There's little whips you can drag across the back of their legs, things that make a lot of noise like quirts and stuff like little paddles and stuff like that. But I've done that quite a few times, and what we did was we wasted a lot of time trying to coax his horse in the trailer that he wasn't going. So at the time, we had to get him in the trailer right now. So we ended up tying a rope through the front, pulling on him, and, and putting heel ropes on him. And we finally got him in there. I've seen them where you get them up close like that, and you, you're about to throw the heel rope, and they go to flopping like a fish. Nobody, nobody I know that likes dealing with these kind of these kind of animals. You know, they they're just hard to deal with. They're they're a real pain. Uh, they're extremely disobedient. You know, nobody's worked with them. Uh, you can't always blame it on the horse. Uh, there's lots of tricks people do to uh, help horses get used to trailers. They feed them in a trailer when they're little. Uh, you put their food in there. That's one way to do it. Uh, the ropes and, and stuff like that, that's, that's a rougher way to do it. Uh, I've even had guys say, oh, well, just put your, put your truck in park and 
put the emergency brake on, we'll get the tractor, drop the rope through there, we'll drag him in on his side. I'm like, he's up, Bubba. <laughs> Ain't that big a deal. But I can guarantee you this, when you go to load this horse, if you think you're going to load this horse in 30 minutes, it's going to take you all day long. And if you think you're going to take all day long, a lot of times it'll go in 30 minutes. <clears throat> but when you go there, this horse, he's not going in. And, it, and, and, it, and the first couple times I went up there to do that, I'm thinking, man, what is really going on here? What is really going on in this horse's mind that would keep him from going in this trailer? Well, it's fear. When he gets up to the back of that trailer, I don't know what they see, okay? They see a big black hole that's fixing to swallow them. I don't know. Big T, clack, clack, clack. You know, they're up there. They see that. But all they know is they're scared and they don't want to go in there. And a lot of times if you don't know the horse and they don't trust you, they're not going to follow you in there. It's going to be a wrestling match all the way. But uh, fear, fear is what keeps that horse from going in. And I got to thinking, ain't we a lot like that, you know, when it comes to things like God and being obedient to God? You know, we get up to the back of the trailer and are like, no, God, I don't want to do that. You know, I don't want to stand up in front of everybody and talk about God. I don't want to go into the mall wearing a shirt that says, you know, I love Jesus. Or, you know, maybe jump up or tell the teller at the, at the grocery store, you know, hey, you look like you're having trouble. You know, Jesus loves you. You know, but that's what God calls us to do. He, goes, he calls us to go out and talk to other people and, and talk to them about Him and tell Him things like our testimony, what helps them to receive him you know how god helped us because if, if they don't know how god has helped us in our lives then you know they're really not going to be able to use him but uh you know i got to thinking about that fear thing you know and i got to thinking you know and i met a i've met a lot of people and i, I know a bunch of guys and and i've done a lot of things you know and and i used to be this guy is like scared i ain't scared of nothing you know y'all lost your mind i ain't scared of that and I found a Hebrew word for that. It's a uh, horse pucky. All right? You can't tell me you have walked all your life and haven't been scared at one time or another in your life of something. <clears throat> and, and if you haven't been scared, get out the house. Uh, there's a lot of scary stuff goes on out here. Uh, I was scared mostly that someone would think that I was scared. You know, so I spent my whole life doing things that I didn't have to do. You know, going out of the way to do crazy stuff so everybody go, that dude ain't scared of nothing. You know, but truly I was. You know, I was scared of showing my feelings and emotions and I was scared that, you know, someone might think differently of me if I told them everything there was to know about me. You know, and I had a lot of fears. I just pushed them down way deep and I covered them up by making sure nobody thought I was scared of anything. You know, I went out of my way. <coughs> but I tell you what, uh, when Jesus started calling me to do what he wanted me to do, I was at the back of the trailer. My eyes were real big and my nose was... And I'm ready to back up and drag somebody off on the end of a rope. <coughs> I put them all in the dirt, you know, and, and I'm like, no, no, you got the wrong guy. Not after what I did. Not after where I've been. You know, I started letting all those fears in me come out. I didn't believe that, that he could... Make me clean enough to do his work. I didn't think that he could uh, give me the tools I need to do the job that he deserved me to do. I was scared. I'd been spending a whole lot of time talking about how I wasn't scared of nothing. And let me tell you, I was scared. There's a little bit of fear in me today as I come up here and I bring his word because I still got that flesh telling me, man, you're not good enough. You know, you will mess it up. But then I read things in this book that tell me that his word will not come back void and that he'll help me and that he'll hold me in his righteous right hand. So then I work up the courage to be obedient and do what he asked me to do and let him take care of the rest. Something we talk about every Wednesday night. Do your best 
and let God take care of the rest. And he'll work on you, and he'll get you to the back of that trailer, and then he'll get you where you're feeling like putting that first foot in. Because that's what it's really about if you have the time to teach a horse to get in the trailer. It's a lot better than dragging him in with a rope because the next time you get a trailer and that horse sees you drive up with a trailer, he's going to cross a couple of fences trying to get away from you. <clears throat> There's a lot of people that we need to talk to and those fears are deep in them. They, uh, they got all kinds of things in their lives that, that, that keep them from even wanting to come to church. You know, uh, you know, think about your job as you go along and your boss asks you to do something that is uh, compromising to your beliefs as a Christian. You know, are you going to be scared of losing your job or are you going to stand up and tell him, hey, look, dude, <clears throat> I'd really love to help you out, but that goes against everything that I stand for. And uh, I'm sorry if it, if it puts you in a position that you have to let me go, but uh, I can't do that. There's a lot of fear right there, especially if you got a, a wife and kids and, and family to take care of. You know, you got a, all that burning around in your head. But God's calling you to be obedient. He didn't say if it puts you in a bad spot. He didn't say if it makes it hard. Because he never, he never promised us that it was going to be easy. He just promised that he was going to be there with us as we went through it. All these fears, they well up on you. And they get to, uh, to working on you. And they cause you to, to be disobedient. They cause you to lock up at the back of the trailer. The best way is to trust in God. Just like that horse needs to trust you. And if you drag him in there, he's not going to trust you. I've chased them after we drug them in. You come up with a trailer, they're gone. Uh... The ones we always worked on, slowly putting them in the trailer, letting them get used to it, slowly working on them, relieving them of that fear. Once they get that first foot in the trailer, they're still scared. Just like when you start to obey God and He's asking you to do something outside of your comfort zone, you'll be scared. There's no doubt about it. But He's got that first foot in there because He's starting to trust you, you know. And then you get that second foot in there, and the next thing you know, they load. There's all kinds of loaders when you get them that load. They go, oh, yeah, this horse will load. Just like us, there's so many different kinds. You get to the back of the trailer, you got one on a rope. You get up there, they make a couple of bobbles. The next thing you know, you and the horse are in the front of the trailer after he done skin his head halfway down the trailer on the top because they're going to launch in there with you. <clears throat> there's, there's the other kind that will get part way in and they, they want you to believe they're doing what you want them to do. I'm going in the trailer. As soon as you turn around and grab the door, they back right over the top of you and they're gone. Now you spent the rest of the day chasing your horse again. <clears throat> I've seen horses that will load by themselves. I've had a horse. I've got a couple of horses. You can throw a rope around their neck, you can point them in the trailer, and they get in. Okay? I had a horse and sold him, and I don't know why, mostly because he didn't like me. If the trailer was in the yard and he was out and the door was open, he would load himself because he wanted to go. He wanted to be in the trailer. He wanted to go do something. Okay, that's how we ought to be when God opens the trailer. I want to get in. I don't know where he's taking me. I don't know where we're going. But all I want to know is that when I get there, that I can do something that's pleasing to him. That's what I want. It changed my whole way of thinking. Every time I had all them feet planted in the dirt, man, if I can get over the fence and the trailer's open, I'm going to be out there going, Hey, bub, let's go. Where's the truck? What you hung on? You know? Just go 30. That's the kind of horse, that's the kind of way God wants us to act. You know, everybody wants that kind of horse. Uh, they load easy. They come out easy. Often we're not like that. I don't know why. I can't answer that other than fear. It says in the Bible 365 times, do not fear. Kind of a coincidence, that's how many days in a year there is. 
You call it a coincidence if you want. God knows us, and He knows our nature is to let the fears inside of us well up till we turn it into something we were going to do turns into something that is impossible for us to do. We'll turn it in our minds so many times how bad it's going to be, how impossible it is, or this is going to happen or that's going to happen. And often when we get there, it's nothing like that. It goes pretty easy and pretty smooth. We let all those fears come in between us and getting on with the getting on and getting to what God wanted us to do. In uh, 2 Timothy in 1 and 7, it says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. Uh, he's wanting us to have that sound mind. When you own a horse, you want a horse to have a sound mind. You want him to be obedient. You don't want him to, to get all boogered up and scared, you know, with a sack on the fence or, or the trailer door squeaking or the first foot he puts in there and the springs squeak, you know, he's backing out over the top of you. Uh, it can get real ugly real quick. <clears throat> There's a lot of stuff in this book that tells us 365 times not to fear. You getting in and finding it is part of being obedient. Taking the time is something we're scared of giving up something else. You know? Do I got time to read my Bible? Well, I got to be here. I got to do that. I got to do this. I got to do that. I'm afraid to stop any of that long enough to read my Bible. <clears throat> and that bothers me. You know, do I read my Bible as much as I ought to? No, I don't. I try to read it as much as I can, and then I make excuses on why I'm not in there. You know, this is where I find out why I shouldn't fear, and this is where I find out the tools that I use to keep me from getting all nervous and, and scared. You know, I come to talk about it, and when I got here and they put this thing on my ear, you know, you can hear me. I'm at the back of the trailer again. I'm like, Whoop. no, I don't want that thing on me. Oh, we're going to record you. I'm like, oh, that makes it even better. <laughs> yeah, really? We're going to put you on YouTube. And I'm like, stop. You can stop any time now, you know. <clears throat> it's building up. It's getting bad. I can't take it. You know, my mouth's getting dry. I'm a little nervous. I'm starting to sweat. Is it hot in here or is it just me? You know? Mm-hmm. Somebody put the trailer up. I don't want to go today. You know? And not, not load. I don't even want to see the trailer on the truck. <clears throat> but he asked me to be obedient. And he's called me. And he's called me a long time ago. And I wasn't obedient. And I ran. I crossed some fences. He ain't putting me in that trailer. I ain't going to do it. He said, oh, yeah, you are. You're going to do it. Because I'm going to make your life miserable till you come back. Because he knows who I am and he knows what I need. And I need to get all the way to the end where there's nowhere else to go and no other answer and no other option for me to try before I go, yep, you know, you were right again. And I'm headed back. But coming back through all that is just as bad as headed down through there the first time. You've got to get back through all that to get where he wanted you to be in the beginning. He called me, oh, I don't know, six years ago. I went to Bandera. He called me to preach. And I told him, no. I was excited about it at first. But I ended up ultimately saying no. I was all pumped up about it. I was married at the time. And when I came home and told my wife that we were going to, uh, I was going to be a preacher. She's like, you're quitting your job? I'm like, yeah. She's like, no. No, you ain't quitting your job. I'm like, all right, well, I'll work. She's like, no, 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 you ain't going to be the first one there and the last one to leave and, and deal with all this other stuff. And it went on to the point where I was like, okay, you're right. So I'm not going to be a preacher. But what I did at that time is I told God there was something more important in my life than him and uh, what he had planned for me. And he removed that from my life. He did in a rapid fashion. And uh, when I was standing there all alone, I still wasn't real smart. Nose still flared out, eyes still big at the back of the trailer going, now I'm really not worthy. Now I really can't do it. So I came along and I did the youth group. 
I finally felt like I could forgive myself for the things I did enough to do his work. And I was with the youth group for a good period of time, and I left them. I left them to go reconciliate the thing that was standing between me and God in the beginning. And when I got back there, and I gave it all I had, and it fell to crumble, and I realized that every day that I hadn't been with the youth group was a whipping. Nothing was going right. Everything was falling apart. I didn't have no spare time to do what I was trying to do anyway. And when I was there, everything I did was wrong. To the point that I gave up. And I kicked that rock again. Get right again. And I came back. And since I've been back to the youth group, everything is clicking along. God's put things in my life, and he's gave me blessings that I can't even begin to tell you about. Where I work, there's no way you get off at 3.30 on Wednesday so you can drive from Fort Worth to here to be at youth group. No way. Ain't happening. I work for a foundation drilling company. We're scattered all the way from Florida to Maryland, all over Texas, Oklahoma, and Louisiana. It's me and three other guys that fix stuff. <clears throat> there's nothing I can tell you other than that God makes it possible every Wednesday that I can be here. I might pay for it on Tuesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday. But it's amazing to me that my boss hasn't come in and said, Hey, you can't go. You can't go because we need you here. It's more important. Because one day, One of the kids comes sliding through that door and said, I can't believe it. We was at school and that guy said, what's more important, school or church? And it's at that moment right there I realized that when my boss comes in and says, what's more important, work or church? He's not going to get the answer he's looking for. He's not going to get the answer he's expecting. He's going to get the only answer I got left for him. Church, it's been a pleasure working for you. I got to go. Because that's what I'm telling you. That's how important it is to me to be obedient to what God says. Because I've been to the back of the trailer. I've been drug in the trailer. I've had the hill ropes on me. I've had the bull whips, you know. You talk about guys get rough. They get back there and peel the hide off of them. Get in the trailer. I felt it all. And I lived through it. There's a lot of things that God's put in my life and there's a lot of things that God took from my life and it's got me right where He wants me. Where I get in the trailer. If the door's open, if I can get through the gate, if I can walk down the fence and get in the trailer, I'm ready to go. That's what it meant to me when I got to mulling around about the obedience. And what keeps me from being obedient? And why am I scared when God tells me 365 times in the Bible, do not fear? Why am I scared when God's placed people in my life that have put a hand on your shoulder and say, you got this. Don't worry about it. You're doing a great job. Man, you loaded in that trailer like no other I ever saw. That's the reward. That's the blessings. When you talk about leaving, and there's four or five of them coming up and going, no, 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 no. You're not going nowhere. That's the reassurance and the blessings that God sends. But the biggest blessings out of being obedient is I don't do nothing. There's nothing I can do to change the life of these kids or anybody else. All I do is show up and be obedient, and God changes the lives of these youth and everybody that I see and talk to. Because believe it or not, if you don't think you have an effect on somebody, 
you always have an effect on somebody. It's either positive or negative, and there's only two effects you can have on anybody. It's either going to be positive or negative. And as you walk as a Christian, you, you say, I'm a Christian, and you carry that cross out. I got mine hanging on my mirror, you know. And you're doing what you're doing. They're looking. Whether you even talk to them, you can make a difference in their lives by being obedient to God when nobody else is watching. Whether he, you know, whether anybody's there or not, God wants you to be obedient all the time. And that's when you tell if you're really walking the chalk that you're selling is if nobody else is looking and you're still being obedient. I mean, it's gotten crazy down to the spot where I'm like, dude, I'm doing two miles an hour over speed lane. I'm breaking the law. It's getting silly, you know. Can I really watch that movie? Is that going to be beneficial to God? Am I going to be obedient by standing here while these guys tell this joke, or should I walk off? By now, all the guys I work with know. Hold them up. Let me get a little further away. It's not like they quit cussing, you know. They don't cuss around me hardly as much. And I do my best not to, to break weak and let one slip around them for sure. But like J.J. said, every time they use the Lord's name in vain, I'll walk 20 feet out of the way whether I work with that guy or not on a job site and I'll ask him to stop because it offends me. It makes me cringe now. It, it does. It just makes me go like that. God wants us to be obedient. He wants us to be loading in the trailer. He wants us to come out of the trailer nice too. Being obedient is a full-time job. It's not a part-time job. I heard someone say the other day, God's a full-time God. We should be a full-time Christian, not part-time. We should be obedient all the time. I don't know where you are in your walk with God. I don't know if you load in a trailer real easy or not. Maybe you've never even seen a trailer. Maybe you've seen a trailer, even a good horse will balk with fear at the trailer sometimes in the right situations. Maybe you just need to, to get back with God and, and ask Him to remove the fear from your life so it's easier for you to get in the trailer. But if you've never been in the trailer and you're thinking about it, I'm going to say a prayer, a prayer of salvation. If you'll join me at the end of it, tell somebody. Father God, we just love you. We want to be obedient, God. Sometimes we're scared. I know you tell us not to be. But our flesh, Lord, we're weak. We need your strength. We need you to come in and remove this fear from us, Lord. I ask that you reach in and show in our dark spots and remove all the fear from us, Lord. Help us to understand that you're in control. Father God, if there's one here today that hasn't been in the trailer, Father, I ask that you gently coax them. Reach into their heart. Give them what they need, Lord, to, to see you. If you've never been in the trailer, you just repeat after me. Father God, I know I'm lost without you. I know that I need you in my life. And I ask you to come in and be the Lord and Master of my life. I know that Jesus came to earth and was born of a virgin. That he died on a cross to carry away my sins. That he was dead and in a tomb for three days. And he rose and defeated death, not for himself, but for me. And Father, I ask that you come in and lead me and guide me and help me to be obedient, servant to you. And Father God, we thank you for the all that you've given us. And we ask that you please forgive us for all the things that we missed and squandered. It is in the precious and mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. I want to thank you all for letting me be here. It is truly an honor to get to serve God on a, a level like this. And then uh, I guess Larry's going to come up 
and give the uh, all the rules and regulations for the voting. I want to thank you all, and you all have a blessed day.